different than all the rest. I'm quite old fashioned, wear a hat, sometimes play chess. And when I'm out, I'm looking Have you ever caught yourself thinking, I suppose the capital waistline could be worse? Well, it can be, and I'm going to show you how. Do you like being bad, or is it just you can't help? So I could finally seem impossible to score. So You're just James? Catherine? James. Catherine? She's in cardiac are... arrest. Start compression. Get the baby out of here. Move! Move! We're gonna kick things off with me getting my first kill. But I assume in a starfish pose during birth. Hang on, Catherine. Happy, Happy birthday! birthday. Happy birthday. I then quickly hey, aged 10 years, on the which intercom. was cool, especially when I received the present from my dad. Try out your new gun on those targets over there. Son, I brought you into this world. I think you know the rest. Another six years way. later, and yeah. I'm learning how to what make new want? friends for the very first time in my life by the miracle Her method way, huh? known only as I can bullying. Amada's not fat. She's just five feet too short. Why hey, would fatso, you do that? I got something you can put in your mouth. Gonna go cry to your daddy, fat ass. Hey, lard ass. Amada's got more chins than a Chinese phone book. You put on a couple of pounds, Amada? Amada's so fat, she broke her leg and gravy poured out. <laughs> All right, yeah, that one got me. At the age of 19 years old, I'm rudely awakened to the realization that absolutely everything is going to shit. And I can't help feeling that this is getting way too real. I'm sure you'll have no trouble escaping on your own. There he is. Hold it right there. You gotta help me. My mom's trapped in there with the rad roaches. Butch then asked me if I could save his mum from the rad roaches oh because Thank he you. may have got stuck in the wall. You are the so I had to help him out in this moment of weakness. We did it! My mom's gonna be okay. You're the best friend I've ever had, man. As Butch hey, starts to open up to I me, much, I get a real look at his vulnerable side. My tunnel snake's jacket. So I pull the rug straight from underneath him. Fuck you. Fuck your mum. Rude boy. For some reason, he didn't like that. He wouldn't stop chasing me, and it was getting on my nerves a little bit, to be honest. So I had to slow him down somehow. Unfortunately, I forgot I'm not holding a BB gun. The world is a dangerous place. And I then confronted the overseer, where he set his guards on me. The vault safe. Guards, help me! How's that going for you, mate? Guards, help! After no one came, I opened the overseer's tunnel and escaped from Vault 101. You did it! You opened the door! The first place I made it to was Megaton. Good to meet you! I'm Moira Brown. I met the Wasteland weirdo Moira, who needed a victim to help her write a survival guide to the Wasteland. And of course, I saw an opportunity here. I could make the most uninformed piece of shit book in the world. Even astrology is going to look scientific compared to this book. Moira wanted me to find out if there is any food in the super duper mega bargain Mark 9000, where I found some chalky nug nugs. So, how's the scabbing been? I, I don't know how to tell you this, Moira. I'm, I ate all the chalky nugs. I'm so sorry. Really? Oh, that's a shame. Then Moira wanted me to get irradiated. So, I tried to sleep with Nova. Well, for you, a room and some company will run you 120 caps. Unfortunately, Nova's prices were way too steep for me, and I wasn't about well, to settle for gob, so I had to find another way to get no some money. caps. Luckily for me, Mr. Burke was ready to make an offer that I just could not refuse. No, 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 not that. So basically, Mr. Burke wanted to employ me to go all Hiroshima or Megaton for 500 caps. 1,000 caps. That's enough for eight nights with Nova and a quick rim. There is no way in hell I was going to turn that offer down. I'm looking for someone to make a delivery. Interested? Great. No, not okay. As as so now I'm kind of Lucy West's personal little Hermes. She wants to deliver a letter to her brother. The only issue is, no one knows where her brother is. Ah, oh, I ain't got time for that right now. But don't worry, Lucy, because I never forget. <laughs> what? After building up okay. enough rads from being coughed on, I returned to Moira, irradiated and ready for probing. 
After waking up a little bit sore and loose, Moira had cured my radiation problems and was now asking me kindly to hike in a minefield. Sounds like the place for some field work. Get in there, get back, and tell me all about it. And could you bring back a mine for my studies? I caught Jericho hanging about outside, and somebody obviously shat in his coffee, because this dude was fuming. Asshole. I don't like you. So I offered him a job. Unfortunately, as it turns out, you have to pay your employees. So for now, Jericho, you're on your own, mate. I asked Moriarty where my father went, and he told me he was heading towards Galaxy News Radio. So off I went into the city, where I bumped into the world famous actor, Johnson the Rock. It wasn't until we got a bit closer that I realised that that's not the rock, that's just an orc. With the help of the Brotherhood of Steel, I made my way to Galaxy News Radio, where we were ambushed by the Incredible Hulk. I guess it's my turn to thank you. I am Three Dog. If it's your dad you seek, then I will abide. He also said something about going to visit a Dr. Lee in Rivet City. On my way to Rivet City, I bumped into this little rat who had lost his father. Those monsters, they're, they're gonna get me. Please find my papa. You will? No, you dummy. Ah, uh, Rivet so City. The true place where- SHUT THE FUCK UP! We're in my little intro now. As I was just getting some information about my father from Dr. Lee, this walking, talking bullsack wanted to tell me about how he lost his phone. You'll be searching for an android. Do you know what an android is? You are to locate my android. Unfortunately, Dr. Zimmer left it on silent and there's no 5G in the wasteland after those bastards burned all the cell towers. So I jumped at the opportunity to help. Excellent! Locate my android and you won't be disappointed. As I was leaving to find this android, a woman from a society of people who jailbreak phones wanted me to free the android that I'm looking for. Is there some kind of a reward? Of course. If you help me, and thus the android, God and the universe will smile upon you. Is there any better compensation? Oh, nothing to see here. <laughs> you got any idea who has Zimmer's phone? Heard a rumor a while back that it was some guy named Pinkerton at Rivet City. So I asked Flack about Pinkerton, and he told me exactly where he was. You mean Genius Boy? Sorry, Genius Boy. Yeah, I've heard of him. Supposedly built Rivet City. Lately, he's even been blamed for the noises in the broken ship bow. Stay sharp. They're everywhere. After finding Pinkerton, I persuaded him to tell me about the android, where he told me I could recall his Fine, previous memories whatever. by just uttering a simple this code. Android. Calls himself Harkness now. Comes in and wants a memory job. I took new memories and replaced his old ones. Just don't go telling Harkness, though. I'm definitely not Of course, a robot. Harkness didn't Do believe I me when I told like him the truth, so I had to forcefully and enact an existential no crisis on him by grabbing Did his balls. <gasps> My god. I... I remember. I remember it all. All those runners I brought down. You. You made me remember. Why? How? My God, what am I going to do? My life, everything, it's all a lie. But what if people were to discover I'm not human, that I'm really a machine? People will kill you when they find out the truth. You're right, it's not safe for me here. I don't know what I'll face in the North, but from the way Zimmer talks about it, it sounds like a paradise. Why would he go through such lengths to retrieve me? Or rather, the other me. If he didn't care, I'll go back with Zimmer. I'll make a new life. Go tell Zimmer I'm ready to go home. The sooner you find my property, the sooner I can get out of this slum. So, uh, Harkness is your android. Harkness, you say? I must wait. Find an opportune moment to confront him. What? What did you do? So off went Samsung Galaxy A321, back to the Commonwealth. Completely fooled. You're very clever, A3-21, but not clever enough. Now, come with me. A3-21, initialize factory reset. Authorization code, 
Beta five three Alpha. What? Bruh. Our dealings are done. I must ready myself for the journey back to the Commonwealth. Now, if you don't mind, all in a day's work. Can Apparently, it was cracker that was in Paulie's crib, minus the, the crack, and I wasn't going to let that fly. He's going to end up dead. So I decided to give him a hit. Thanks, man. I really need this fix. <laughs> Yo, what is going on with your neck? Yeah, me too. <laughs> oh no, Paulie! Come around here. Leave you with all the others. Oh, she's looking for Paulie. Oh no, I'm sorry. I've got Just, better things to do. Yep, join the crew. What the hell? Well, I'm afraid your father is no longer here. Oh. Good luck finding your father. I happen to bump into what Diego, where I threaten to tell Father Clifford about the little romance between him and Angela if Diego doesn't cut ties with her. Never mind. It doesn't matter what Angela thinks. Soon I will take vows of chastity. I swear to you, our relationship is chaste. I am only her friend. However, I must confess, I have not done all I could. I am sorely tempted. Oh, bro's getting all bricked up. Resolve. I will tell Angela we cannot see each other again, even as friends. Um, then I told Father anyway. What? If that's true, I'll defrock him. Not only is he fornicating, but he's doing it with such an innocent young girl. Ah, Diego, what have you done? He has forced my hand. I cannot let him be a priest now. Diego was then expelled from the church, which left Father Clifford as the only remaining member of the Church of St. Monica. Diego, you have been fornicating with that strumpet Angela Staley. Don't try to deny it. I have a witness. No, it's not true. Yes, she has been tempting me, trying to seduce me, but I've resisted. Just leave. I cannot bear to look at you. You are hereby excommunicated from the church. May your soul wither in purgatory. I am no longer an acolyte. I've been expelled. Sometimes, when God shuts one door, though, he opens another. Diego then asked Angela if she could take him in marriage, where things start to take a bit too much of a positive turn. I couldn't allow Diego to get out of this with a stupid little smile on his face, so I'd done what St. Monica would have wanted me to do all along. Sorry, Diego. Can you help me? I need water. Purified water, please. I'm a firm believer of the famous proverb, feed a man for a day, and he'll eat a fish. But feed a man for a lifetime, and he's gonna start fishing. Just leave. So I encourage Big Mickey to go and hunt for his own water. I'd like to die without you standing over me, bloater. Please, if you find any. Oh come on, man! I can't make this any easier. I swear, some people are just beyond help. Help me! No. Anyway, back to finding my father, who happens to have broken into another vault, Vault 11-2. It seems that this vault's gimmick is to put bald people into glass kinder eggs. It's a bit weird, but sure, okay. Hey there, sport. Oh, for God's sake, Beautiful he's bald as well. You can't get a prey. You should go talk to Betty. She's waiting for you over on the playground. Have fun, sport! Before I met up with Betty, I had to box a dog. I'm Betty. I live here on Tranquility Lane. Want to play a game? And then I All made friends with Betty by bullying Timmy. Time. Not that Timmy. You can? I guess we'll see. Huh. Good luck! To make Timmy cry, I took this military training brochure and told him that his parents are going to send him away to Vietnam. Hi, want to play? You're going to Nam, boy. What? No, I'm not. But, but I don't want to go away. I don't want to leave my mommy. No, no. Yay! You did it. Good job. Pay a visit to the Rockwells. They're very happily married, and I'd like you to change that.
For the next task, I had to break up the Rockwell's marriage. First I stole Martha Simpson's lacy underwear, and then placed them on Mr. Rockwell's desk in his basement. Then I ran up to Mrs. Rockwell, and I told her to come downstairs and check Roger's desk in the basement. What were you doing in our basement? What's down there? What's this? Women's clothing? Down here? What? What the hell is this? It looks like Roger's a fan of women's clothing. But and finally, because is Janet is a why? true 2070s is girl, she couldn't here? quite comprehend why a man would want to wear a woman's clothes. And she diagnosed her marriage as terminal. Oh my god! Roger! He... He wouldn't, but... This has to end. Roger, you son of a bitch! What? What did I do? Did you think I wouldn't find out? What kind of a sicko are you? Janet, calm down. What are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about. You spent all that time down in the basement, and I never questioned it. What's wrong with being in the basement? What the hell is going on? You pervert! You disgust me! Just stay away from me! How did, it, how did it come to this? I just don't understand. I'd like you to kill... Betty wanted me to kill Mabel in a fun and quirky way. So, I went full Home Alone. I'm messing with the Let oven... Just go light the oven to get it warming up. Oh! Moving roller skates about the place. Reprogramming Mr. Handy and causing the chandelier to drop at precisely the right time by a little bit of chain fiddling. Whatever that is. The Henderson estate is in tip top shape, young master. Have a wonderful day. Right. A roller skate on the stairs? Oh my, that is simply inspired. In the doghouse, out behind the abandoned home. Now for the grand finale, Betty wanted me to become a living nightmare. And become a the pint pint size hash slinging slasher. To eliminate all the residents of Tranquility Lane. can't do that here. And now you have to pay. I had the distinct impression you enjoyed yourself. We are like you and I. Now, you ask for the means to leave Tranquility Lane? And so I grant it to you. The door is open. After doing all of Betty's horrid deeds, she opened the doorway to let me escape Westview, along with my dad, Liam Neeson. Son, what I do have are a very particular set of skills. <laughs> Clearly. Once being disappointed by my dad, which is weird because usually it's the other way around, I came across this lovely person and a whole load of orcs in the Jefferson Memorial that needed putting down. And let me tell you, put him down I did. You seem troubled, like there's a cloud hanging over you. Then Dad decided he wanted to give me a lecture after I'd done all of this his dirty work. Don't worry about that, I've big guy. We're talking about you. Whatever life you make for yourself out here, it's in your power to make it a good one. I just don't want to see you go down the wrong path. 
but these guys showed up soon after, which prompted Dad to sacrifice himself to the cause. Enough of these delays. Just another minute and I'll be done. Run. Run. I'm sure that's the last we'll see of Colonel Sanders, right? We can't go any further, we need to stop! It was time to escape, but Garza had other ideas and Garza decided he wanted to have a heart attack. He has a heart condition, I will not leave him behind! But rest assured, I, I said I will not leave him! So, after a long negotiation with Dr. Lee, I persuaded everyone to leave him behind. Maybe you're right. Very well, I'll tell him, and then we'll continue. Let's make this quick. Garza, I'm sorry, but we must keep moving. If you can't keep up, I'm afraid we'll have to go on without you. But what will I do? You would leave me here alone? Garza, I'm sorry, we have to go now. Evil. <laughs> yes? You should. I don't know what I expected, but it wasn't for that to go off straight away. I don't know why. After all that, you just killed a man? What is wrong with you? Oh. I guess you heard that. I am Dr. Madison Lee. I have people with me in need of shelter. You must allow us access at once. Finally, we arrive at the Citadel. The HQ of the Brotherhood of Steel. Well, this chapter of the Brotherhood of Steel, at least. Plus, yeah, you need a bit more oil on that, mate. And then I had some weird noises when I was pillaging the Citadel, and I don't know if this was some glitch, or if the Fezra had put this in as like a little Easter egg, but I swear these two are having it away with each other. And this isn't just the case of me leaving P-Hub on, this is in the actual game. Scribe Rothschild told me there about a device that stored in, in fact, Vault 87. This thing's called a GEC, and vault. of course it was me who had to go and get it. Cabins is close by and may provide an alternate means of access. I find it hard to believe your father raised such a child. I feel pity for whatever it is you've gone through that has made you so bitter. Also on a positive, Iron Giant's here. I then totally went into the minefield and totally returned with a mine from the area just to totally impress Moira. My very own landmine! Oh, just what I've always wanted! You can handle a lot of abuse. Next time you get badly injured, return here so I can examine you before I heal you up. Come back here with some serious injuries, maybe a crippled limb or two. So I arrived at a little lamplight on my quest for the Gek, where this little shit wouldn't let me get past until I saved these dumb friends. Take another step, or we'll blow your fucking head off. I ain't gonna let what happened to Sammy and Squirrel happen to anyone. This little rat wanted a siege, and I brought him one. Break down the door, boys! Wait, why is he opening it? What is he doing? What is going on? What is going on? Well, I'm in. Where is everyone? There you are. Oh, oh my god. Oh no. I can't move. I can't, <laughs> I can't move. <laughs> this isn't what I wanted. I didn't want this. <laughs> I can't leave. I'm stuck. I cannot leave. Well, I screwed the pooch on this one, I think. After falling victim to my own genius, I had to reload and play ball with McCready. Them and Penny got themselves caught. Basically, McCready wanted me to rescue like Sammy and Squirrel from the slavers that are in Paradise, Paradise Falls. Falls. If you can bring them back, I might let you in. When I got to Paradise Falls, Gatekeeper Grouse oh, gifted right me with there. the Mesmotron and Nobody's told me to forcefully collect some people for money. Is that alright for you, YouTube? Who the fuck There's am I no kidding? This thing's getting friends. demonetized from the moment it uploads. We know who you are. You can come in. I got this Mesmotron thing. It's some kind of stun gun. I'd like you to test it out for me. Should make getting slaves easier. You take this measure, shoot it at some poor schmuck. 
While he's in La La Land, you slip one of these collars over his head. Tell the slave to boot it over here pronto or his head'll pop. Here's a list of special targets Eulogy wants enslaved. There's four that Eulogy wants especially. Arkansas, Susan Lancaster, Red, and Flack. Heard about you. You're some pretty slick shit. Hey, mister. Can you get us out of here? Eulogy Jones was asking for 2,000 caps for Sammy, Penny, and Squirrel, which is a lot more than what I'm used to paying for children, to be honest. I'm thinking thousand caps for him, bringing us to a total of 2,000 caps. So I had to earn some caps by capturing some people for grouse. I then gave Eulogy a great business proposal, to capture a little lamplighter and send him to Paradise Falls for a bit of cash. In essence, sure, I would be I swapping one lamplighter for a preferred one. get a killer price when you find a buyer who recognizes the product's long-term potential. But maybe if we could get one when they're young, they might not have as much fight in them yet. I think you just got yourself a deal. Sure, if you think you can pull it off, I think I might know a buyer who'd be interested. I'll send one of my best to wait around the entrance to Lamplight. You go in and find the sweetest, most trusting little one you can find. Lure that kid outside and everyone's happy. Except the kid, of course. Flack was first up for me to capture, and he proves a lot easier than I expected. But before we collect Flack, there's just something I've always wanted to try. We are going to be attempting to sleep overnight in a superstore. I should be able to hide here. Oh, oh no. Better get out of here if you know what's good for you. Oh no. <laughs> I'm not warning you again. Leave now. I'm trying. I'm going all right. Jesus. I hope you know what you're doing. Lily, I don't. Why is everything all blurry? Am I drunk? I think I'm drunk. Do I seem drunk to you? Yeah, just put this collar on. Sure. What's this thing for anyway? Yeah, you better start running to Paradise Falls or your head's gonna go boom. I'm a slave now? Don't kill me, please. I'm going. Hey! Look, Look out! Where's he gone? How the hell'd you get old Queen Flack into that collar? I'm surprised you're still alive. We need to keep a close eye on that one, though. He knows our system too well. Here's another collar. Keep hurting the swine in here, and you will have more bottle caps than you'll know what to do with. Arkansas is that asshole holed up in that minefield. This is the Arkansas in his natural habitat. Little does he know that he is about to be in chains to do this. I will have to approach with stealth and extreme caution. Ah, oh, shit. I don't think he heard. Oh fuck! Hey! Oh, oh, jigs up. Oh my god, this finger's in range. What? Yeah, what you go. happening? Who are you again? I'm just gonna put this collar on you. Sure. What's this thing for anyway? I'm a slave now? Don't kill me, please! I'm going! Thanks to you, we finally have that sniper Arkansas in a collar. You have no idea how many good men that prick put into the dirt. I'm tempted not to sell him, just so we can torment him. Use him for target practice or something. <laughs> Here's another collar. Keep those hoochies rolling in and you'll be rich in no time. Susan Lancaster lives at Tenpenny Tower. She was one of us. After bagging Arkansas, I made my way to Susan Lancaster, where she tried making moves on me, but I wanted to own her with a collar and not a ring. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Susan Lancaster. Perhaps we can become better acquainted in the near future. What? That was a quick change. I don't feel so good. I have some friends I want you to meet. Put this collar on. Oh. What is it? It's heavy. Oh, well, what friends are you talking about? Do I know them? Oh yeah, you know them all right. The slavers? I I'm a slave? How did this happen? 
I'm off to bed. Susan thought she could just up and leave, huh? We showed her different, didn't we? She'll think twice about slitting one of our throats now that she's collared. We'll need to come up with something extra special for her. Lastly, we had to collect Red, who proved not as easy to own as the others. Apparently she was busy being captured in another questline or something, so I guess this is where we start Big Trouble in Big Town. To capture, uh, I mean save Red. Hey, who are you? Just don't cause any trouble, okay? They came and rounded up a bunch of us and carried them off. God. They must be doing awful things to them. I had to go down to Germantown's police headquarters, where Red was being held by a load of orcs. You're rescuing me? Thanks! I thought we were goners for sure. Everyone else is dead. We're taken away to who knows where. Well, except maybe for Shorty. They dragged him off downstairs to the kitchen a while ago. But no one comes back from the kitchen. Thanks. Who are you? Never mind, I don't care right now. Let's go get red and So get I saved Shorty and escorted Thanks everyone back to Big Town, I where I very promptly sent them an invoice attack. for my services. Probably won't. Right, of course. Rescuing me was a job to you, and you're a real professional. Well, here you go. I wish I had more I could give you. I saved your sorry life, and this is all I get. Well, I guess you can have this. It's the money I was saving to buy medicine for the town's people. I know you've already risked your life once already, but I heard the mutants talking about another attack. They'll probably be here soon. Damn, that sucks. Anyway. Fine. You've done enough already. I get it. We'll figure something out on our own. Before taking Red away to the happy place, I performed life-saving surgery on a fellow named Time Bomb. Ooh. Oh my god! What are you? You know what you're doing there? Of course I know what I'm doing. Ah oh shit, I guess Flash found the landmine. Whoa. So finally I tagged I Red and sent her on her way so to Paradise good. Falls. Put this on. Okay, hey, hey, this thing feels weird. Can I take it off now? I've been wanting to get Red in here for a long time. I have a little something special planned for her. Oh take God, another car and keep those puppies coming. After taking enough damage, physically and emotionally, I limped back well, to Moira, where she fixed feel? my wounds. What got you kinda. in such a bad mood? Oh yeah, the massive physical trauma. Luckily, I'm here to patch you up. Now, hold still. Go quit fidgeting. Ugh. I even stitched a little smiley face in you to keep up your spirits. She then wanted There's me to test out some mole rat, rat repellent, repellent that she developed. developed. I needed to be tested on a few mole rats before I can say it's a success. I tested it out and it works just fine. Oh, come on. You barely even left. Hey, we grabbed this on our last mission. Thought you might like it. Wow, thanks for tins meat, mate. If it keeps you happy and your gun in your holster, then it's well worth it to me. After finally acquiring enough caps, I returned to Eulogy to purchase my little helpers. Business. I'm in the market for a bodyguard like yours. You selling? Gotta be careful using a slave as a bodyguard. Most aren't exactly motivated to keep you alive. You know what I mean? You're in luck. It turns out my girl Clover is just the right little package for you. Crazy in a fight, crazy in the sack, crazy every which way but loose. But most of all, she's crazy in love with whoever's holding her leash. And for the low cost of a thousand caps, Miss Clover could be crazy for you. Deal, 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 deal. I am sold. You don't know the half of it, friend. Clover's all yours now. Have fun, you two. My name's Clover. I hear you're the new man in my life. You're looking for a bodyguard, and I'm looking for a body. Sounds like we're going to have some fun times, lover. She does come on a bit strong, don't she? After blowing all of my children freeing money, I had to find another way to break the little shits out. And I did, by reconnecting Eulogy's computer so Squirrel so can disconnect it, huh? their explosive collars. Well, 
means we're one step closer to getting out of here. I needed the distraction for 40 so that I could help the little shits escape from their cages. And luckily Crimson was proficient in the sloppy toppy 9000 uh -huh. skill tree. And what makes you think I give two shits about what 40 could use? Hey, 40's a good looking guy, you know? Maybe he could. Maybe. Maybe I'll go see how he's doing. Maybe there's something I could do for him. Hey there, sugar. Lonely night. I can really give you something to look at. Don't look at me, you look at him. Come on, you don't need 40. to get all nervous Let's now. Let's take a break. All right, all right. Just keep quiet. I'm busy, so piss off. You got business here, you talk to you. After manipulating so Crimson to engage in the Gluck Gluck, we had mere seconds to free the lamplighters, as 40 didn't get that name for nothing. Alright bozos, let's go. Now don't worry, we're out of here. Me and Sammy can make it no problem. The stupid ravioli faces wanted me to persuade Penny to leave Paradise Falls, but if I do, I'll be breaking my save as little people as possible quota, so I persuaded him to ditch that dumb bitch and head home. Yeah, maybe you're right. Me and Sammy can leave at least. Alright, we're out of here. See you on the outside, Mungo. Heading back to Little Lamplight, I came across the person that was sent by Yuji to pick up the human cargo. I can't help thinking it, but I think I've seen her before. So I made it into Little Lamplight, where I came across the guy with possibly in, the most questionable nickname that I've ever heard. I'm Sticky. <laughs> Forget these little kids. Take me to Big Town and you'll get your reward. My girlfriend Red has lots oh, of cats. No. Wait a minute, that's a bit yeah. sus on Red's Big part. Town, the dude just turned 16. How about you bring me a kid? What do you mean? He was a kid yesterday. You so I've done the only thing I could do with a faulty product. Watch it. I took him into the garden shed Gun and gently rinse. iced him. Happy birthday, mate. There you go. Oh, no. Oh, no. Stay up there. Just... Come on, just go on up there. No. Hey, Bumble. I've got some puppies in my van. Wanna go have a look? I don't know. I'm not supposed to go outside. Matching PJ party. Woo! Why, hello, little girl. What a lovely dress you have. That's not a dress. Anyways, we're going on an adventure. You bet we are. In fact, I want you to have this friendship necklace. Ow, it's all scratchy. Don't fuss, my little girl. You'll get used to it. Well, okay. I can't wait to tell Lucy about this adventure. Yo, squirrel, sure Sammy, what's so going on? You. Now we've got a big day ahead of us, so let's get going. Goodbye, best friend. Enjoy your new life. I know I'll be enjoying the caps. Do I need Returning to Eulogy, I caught him disciplining 40 for his mm, slacking off. Dumber, I'd make a signpost out of you. What can I do for you? Did you get that package I sent you? I did indeed. And she was well worth the effort. I found her a nice loving home right away. It's so nice to be able to help people who need people, isn't it? It just warms the heart. Yo, what the fuck? I went through Little Lamplight and gained access to the back door of Vault 87. Anything for you, What lover? is going on with your face? Oh, you look like a fucking baguette. When Crimson gives you a gluck, but you already not. Going through Vault 87, we come across my favourite companion of all Fallout 3, Forks. And what happens next absolutely kills me, but I've got to do this for you guys. I have no reason to tell you anything. You kill me, you get nothing. Well, maybe I want nothing. With Fork's dead, I had to brave the radioactive chamber myself to retrieve the Gek. So, like Jesse Pinkman, I fill up on drugs, don a yellow jumpsuit and run into that place. What does this do? Oh my god! What did I even do? Well, thank you all for watching. Like and subscribe if you clearly see the length of this video and you know that this attempt at humour is pointless and embarrassing. As I was escaping with the Gek, someone dropped a boogie bomb which made me hit the deck and do the worm. And it was none other than Colonel Sanders who should definitely be dead. Good work, soldier. Make sure the Gek is secured aboard my Vertibird. So, you're awake. Colonel, I have need of you. Yes, sir. 
After Colonel Sanders left the room, some weirdo in a webcam was dropping me tips to dance and use a shake weight. It wasn't long until the simp wanted to meet me in person, once he'd released my restraints and tipped his fedora. And I'll unlock your restraints as well. I'll be waiting for you in my office. Please don't carry. Probably should have seen this one coming, but President ah, Simp bottled it at the last minute and once again hid behind his computer United screen. Has fallen on hard times yet, he kind of spoke about making the wasteland great again and also mentioned the, the word cleansing, which honestly does put me on edge a little bit. So called super mutants, ghouls, horrific creatures. Mutation must be eradicated. He wanted me to infect the water purifier at Jefferson's Memorial with what he called a modified FEV virus to cull the wasteland population from non-pure humans. What next? Am I going to be spreading chemtrails, flattening the earth, turning friggin' frogs gay? So I took the vial and made my way to the Citadel. All I'm saying is, the longer we sit here, the more time they have to shore up their defenses. We should hit them sooner rather than later. If the Enclave has the Gek, there's nothing stopping them from starting... Damn, this sounds kind of urgent and stressful. Guys, right. I just got to do something. Now, just be right back. I then tested out the Mole Rat repellent, and it didn't repel them as much as make their heads explode. <gasps> oh, I can't wait to hear how the repellent's working. It's working great. It's definitely humane. Excellent! Finally, mankind will have a way to shoo away those annoying pests without resorting to cruelty or violence. Moira then wanted me to hide an observer device in a Milo's yes, nest whilst not killing them for validity purposes. Avoid, or even outsmart them. So I picked up this observer device to study them in their natural habitat. And be sure not to kill any Mirelurks inside their nest. Breakfast! So, are they intelligent? Do they have a leader? Some sort of king? Or priests? Or some sort of scaly community center? I'm sorry, Moira. I got carried away. Oh, no. You didn't rile them up, did you? Because I'm not getting a very good signal from the observer. I wish we could have gotten more information, but this will have to do for the book. I was then tasked to check on the local library and report back to Moira. I didn't go, but I did make up a compelling story and tell her that everything was destroyed. Is it there? Are there books? Oh, can I go borrow some? Nah, it's all burnt down. Really? All of it? Not even a single tattered paper bag? She then made me go on a history lesson in Rivet City because Rivet City. that's useful. It's the most successful survivor settlement around. But no one here really knows how it started. Godless Unfortunately, Diego us. seems to be in the first stage of grief over Angela's well-timed demise. Opens another. I've asked Angela to marry me, and she said yes. I'm on duty. Make it quick. Give it a rest, will you? I wish I had the courage to end it all. I mean, I can help with that. Thank you. A quick shove should do it. Ah! <laughs> oh! Ah! Fuck's sake. Oh! Clover! No! No, Clover! No, a sweet Clover! Why? Why did you do that? Why, why, why did you follow me? Why would you leave me? Any luck finding out how Rivet City got started? All the heartbreak I've just gone through for that stupid book, and that's the first thing you say to me. Moira is really starting to annoy me, so I started to lie even more, and I told her that Rivet City is basically Atlantis. I don't even know anything in books about that sort of things. Unless... Oh my goodness! Do, do you think it's originally from Atlantis? This could change everything! Here, have your pay. Our book is going to be huge! She then wanted me to reactivate the robots at Robco and raise a robot army. Finally! There's a way to reactivate and control the robots there. It'd make for a good example of harnessing the past technology for the book. Well, you'll be getting access to an army of robots. That ought to be reward enough, right? I really appreciate you doing this for me. I'm feeling better already. Who are you? Oh yeah, your brother's sure. missing. Yeah, I'll have a look. Doing me a big favor and all. Arfu is northwest of Megaton, on an old overpass over the Potomac. If you follow what's left of the river, 
You can't miss it. Well, for you, a room and some company will run you 120 caps up front. We've finally done it, boys. We are now able to afford a night with Nova. It's been a long time coming, and I'm glad you're all here to witness. Hey there. Get lost, creep. Looking's free. Everything else will cost you. Is she talking to me or him? He's opened the door! Wait, where are you going? I oh, find I'll just sleep on my own then. Why do I feel so sore? Oh my... What the hell are you doing? Can you at least shoot me in the head before you leave? Now that was... Look what we have How can you be mad? I shot you, didn't I? That's what you Help. asked for. To help me get over yeah, what happened to Clover, I, I decided to go on a lad's holiday with my buddy Jericho to Magaluf. Yeah, I am. <laughs> this is gonna be great. Some good old-fashioned violence. We met up with our holiday rep who informed us that the pit is full of slaves and there's a nasty disease going around that needs a cure. Luckily, this meant that the cost of accommodation in the area was so cheap. Well, for so many reasons. I had to find a way of looking like a slave to sneak past border control. So, I headed towards the nearest group of slaves to steal the clothes from their backs. Literally. Wait, we're free? You're serious? You killed them and we're just free to go? You're either the kindest person in the world or the dumbest. Either way, thank you. I can help you. It's the least I can do. What is it that you need? All I want is your clothes. My clothes? Off my back? Please, take them. What the fuck, man? La right zonto, la zonto, la zonto. La zonto, la zonto, la zonto. Before we go, there's one last thing. Yeah, what? Relax, it's not about you. It's about your companion. We only have enough supplies for two. He's gonna have to stay behind. Like all good holidays to Magaluf, I left my best friend in a ditch and carried on with my night. Jericho. Look, mate, I'm sorry, but I'll see you when I get back, yeah? We finally got to Border Patrol, where I was stripped of my belongings. Now would you look at this? Where'd you get all this shit anyway? Whatever. Mine now. Mean boss to- I'll take that and that, thank you. We can do this the easy way. Or the I'd break you in fucking halfway. Your choice. Fine. Have it your way. Fucking talk, you piece of shit! Jesus. <laughs> Oh my god, whoa, 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 whoa. No, no! Jesus Christ, man. Have you seen Wild Bill around? No. Grinder. Oh man, he's having a rough night. I finally met with Medea, who seems to have a bit of a wind problem. It always smells like that in here. You get used to it. I ask my loyal workers, who among you is prepared to fight for your freedom? Right here. We have one. This man here will fight in the hole. What is going on? Come on, Asher. Fucking schizophrenic. Sir, what's going on? Why is everyone talking over each other? Not even each free, other themselves as well. We may all someday the rest stop, truly free stop talking, from the dust everyone. Of the world. She sets up the fights. I happened across someone who couldn't handle their drinks too well, and unfortunately, there was only one thing to do. At least you won't have a hangover. After becoming a champion of the slaves. I arrived at Ash's tower, where he showed me the cure to skin rash. And turns out, it's his own child. Though, I'm not really sure how you're supposed to reply that. Do you like, grab the baby and use it like a roll-on deodorant, or like, a bar of soap? I have so many questions, Sandra! Oh, you just eat the kid. Alright. Oh, I never knew that. Whoa, 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 whoa. alright, alright. I'm gonna give you a bit of honesty here. That's not in the vanilla game. That's just some very strange mod that someone put time into, and to whoever that was, thank you, I appreciate your weirdness, it's funny, but please do not contact me, ever. Since eating the child was off the cards, or the dining table, I decided to steal the child in the hopes that I could keep it as my own pocket baby. Kojima, eat your heart out. Ah, you finally made it. Werner wanted me to switch off the floodlights to keep the trogs out of Uptown, and I wanted me to switch off the floodlights to bring the trogs into Uptown. wipe out all the bastards in Uptown, and that honor falls to you. Unfortunately, Werner wouldn't let me keep the pocket baby if I wanted to progress in the game. So, I took matters into my own hands. The problem with this is that Werner is immortal at this moment in time, and I can't progress the quest without giving him the baby, once I've made the choice to steal that little fleshy baked bean. Ah, you finally made it. So hurry up and put the brat in the crib. See? You're stuck on this path, pal. Might as well see it through to the end. 
No, the only way to put an end to their kind is to destroy their home and salt the fucking earth. Give Uptown back to the Trogs. So I handed the baby over, I turned the lights off and set hell loose. I should have gunned you down long ago. What the hell is that? Man, this place really is like Maggot. What with all the diseases going around, the lack of clothing, Trogs. Oh, hell yeah. I'm king of the pit. I can take care of the day-to-day -day stuff. You just reap the benefits, huh? And if you really care, Medea said she's looking for toys for the brat. I guess if you find anything, you could bring them to her. Now give me back my baby! Any luck finding Wild Bill? I heard Bill's blood curdling screams and I knew it was too late. Oh no! I saw multiple trunks clawing, tearing, chewing on his limbs. Horrible! Poor Bill! I scared off the drugs and ran to Bill. He was still Bill, alive! He, he, he was alive? Barely. He was calling for you and I had to put him please, out of his misery! stop. I, I can't hear any more of it. I, I don't feel so well. He, he's one tough bastard. Took every shot of my pistol! Uh, I, th I think I'm gonna faint. Please stop it! And one concrete block to the head! No! Oh my god! Uh, I'm going to... <laughs> We're all indebted to you for setting us free from those bastards. You just don't know what a difference you've made. I've got some toys for the kids here. That sure would help me out. There you go, here's some toys. If I can't have you as a pocket baby, no one can. Oh my god! Am I the only one alive? Oh, I'm happy with that. Yeah, we've, we've done a good job. I had a Tashiwa. Returning to the wasteland, I took a shortcut through this quaint little village where the residents were so happy to see me. Dang. Welcome to Andale. What can the Smith family do for you? And it's good to meet you too. Feel free to stay in Andale as long as you like. Heck, stop by the house for dinner sometime if you'd like. Just let Linda know beforehand so she can make enough for four. Well, not everyone was happy. What are you doing in this town? Get out! Run, stranger! Run! So, I told Jackie Boy about Old Man Harris having another one of his episodes. Did he now? I've talked to him about spreading rumors. I guess I'll just have to have another little chat with him. And I'll grab some snacks for the road. That was genuinely the nicest place in the whole wasteland. From one nice place to another, I arrived at Tenpence Hotel. Yep, you knew this part was coming before even clicking on the video, and you knew that we're going to treat every resident in Megaton like a rustler's beef burger. We're going to stick the microwave on Max. You are currently trespassing on Alistair Ten. I came all this way to watch Megaton burn, but couldn't because... You haven't rigged the bomb yet. So I quickly rigged the nuke to blow and made my way to the observation deck. You're an odd one, aren't you? The detonation and here it is. is. The moment that we've all been waiting for. Some of you knew it was going to happen. All of you knew it was going to happen, let's be honest. So, let's just press the button. What do you mean, well done, Mr. Burke? He done literally nothing. He didn't even hit the fucking button. I have been asked to extend to you an invitation to reside at Tenpenny Tower. And just like that, I was gifted an apartment at Tenpenny Tower. It makes me think if millennials hadn't been buying smashed avocado and had been nuking settlements all day, maybe they wouldn't be whinging about a housing crisis. New accommodations. Now that Megaton had been well and truly cooked, it seems like a great time to honour Lucy West's memory and find her brother. So I headed to Arafu. Ah, fuck. So I headed to Arafu where the entire West residence was in an AOE K-hole. Ian West was missing amongst the crackheads, and Evan King reckoned that the Morgoths had gotten their septum piercings into him. So I made my way to the local Hot Topic, where Robert tried gatekeeping me from the Black Parade. I told him that I literally just jumped off a bridge, and that was enough for him to see that I was edgy, and he let me in. Vance said others of our kind would find us. Sorry I was so harsh, but I don't share our leader's ability to feel others of our kind. Vance greeted me with the lyrics to his new song, and if science would call us cannibals, eaters of human flesh, society labels us as monsters, demons, and the unclean. 
and then pointed me towards Ian. To Ian, you're free to do so. Huh? What do you want? In a surprising turn of events, Ian was going through a bit of a phase and ended up killing his parents so to prove that he was hardcore. I told Ian that he would grow up one day and should return to the bloody pulp of his sister in Megaton. She really misses I suppose he could scrape her off the walls and have her for breakfast. I think I had it all wrong. I shouldn't have come here. I bet Lucy is feeling just as bad as me. Yeah, sorry about that. And say my goodbyes, then I'll head on back. I then came across an entry on Vance's terminal, where he voiced his disapproval of a member of the family killing RFU's Brahmin due to a tense political situation between the two settlements. In light of this, I promise you that no. Finally, Vance was persuaded to forge a peace with Arafu and to stop attacking the village and their cattle. I don't know how you did it. But God damn, am I glad Evan King was absolutely delighted when I told him that the stupid emos would stop harassing his village. And then I killed his cows ending the wasteland's shortest ceasefire. Oh, and I also told him that Ian was dead because I just absolutely love the idea of Evan running into Ian in the future and getting so confused. Consider yourself welcome back here anytime you're in this part of the waste. I think it's probably time for me to leave. Hello, stranger. I'm Tinker Joe, premier supplier of robotic parts and service throughout the DC wasteland. I'd like to buy one of your fine robots. I'm afraid these bots are all spoken for. I'm just delivering them now. I've got a custom gutsy that isn't spoken for, but... Well, RL3's a bit finicky about the company he keeps, and I don't think he likes the look of you. I started to feel lonely and was emotionally destroyed by RL3's opinion of me. So I started to think, maybe Moira was right. Maybe I should go to Robco and create an army of friends for myself. I stuck my widget right in its filthy mainframe and birthed my own mechanical family. Oh well, fuck off, I won't pay child support. Yeah, that's what I thought. Feeling dissatisfied with my adopted children, I yearned for a real connection. So I returned to pick up my bro, Jericho, after I ditched him for the pit. Oh my god, Jericho, no! What have I done? Once again, Mora chose the hey, worst time to come and chat shit you? to me. However, oh, she was looking fine oh, AF with her new haircut, so I'm willing to entertain what it. What happened? Um, I have no idea. Same here. Still, at least I'm okay, huh? Treating me and keeping keen is what they say, so I started negging Moira, hopefully silly. lowering her confidence just, just enough to give me a chance. My face after the explosion. But that doesn't explain why it peels away in strips. Ooh, and oozes. Fiddle with any interesting technology lately? Oh no, she knows what I've done to the mainframe. I swear, if I have to research anything else, I'll just shoot myself now. Well, lucky for you, we're done. And for all your nasty attitude, I think the quips made it a lot more entertaining to read. Now, I just need to do a few last tweaks, and it'll be ready to print and distribute. Thank God that after all this time, I'll be done with this glorified toilet paper of a book. And it didn't even take long for the reviews to come in. Damn survival guide said these things were cute. I swear, that damn book nearly ended me. This so-called wasteland survival guide, it's a piece of crap is what it is. Serves me right for taking advice from some crazy girl's book. So I told him that I co-authored the book. Then I think you ought to leave before I decide to pay you back for all the bad advice and take your damn book with you too. Wait, so you don't want me to sign it? I didn't want the shitty book, so I reverse pickpocketed him and sent him on his merry way. Take this shit back, man, I don't want it. I caught up with Brian Wilkes, who was role-playing as Doctor Who and just regenerated into his next form. A landmine. So I searched the town whilst waiting for Brian to come back from whatever Time Lord adventure that he was on. Oh, it's Brian's dad. Wake up, mate. Ah, uh, well. Looks like I've got another orphan to sell to Paradise Falls. <sighs> Sorry, kid. Your old man's ant food. You... you know what you are? You're a big asshole. That's right. An asshole. My papa said never to say that word, but you deserve it. I told Brian the bad news that his dad was killed by some massive ants, and he wanted me to take revenge. You gotta stop it. So this can't happen to anyone else's family ever again. Um, I boy, oh you a boy! Long time ago. Did I take revenge? My dad would still be alive.
after D underscore destroying some ant minions, I had to go deeper into their lair and stop their queen from shitting out hundreds of kids. I mean, someone's got to stop her from taking advantage of the welfare state. Whilst heading deeper into the ant lair, I found a recording of a guy who had painted the walls red with his brains. But just before he vented his brain cells, he had hid a key to a stash of some very desirable items somewhere in the metro tunnels. So I grabbed the key, and I opened Grady's safe to find the most OP set of armour in the game. The naughty nightwear. Man, I look good. As I was leaving, Lord Binface got all up in my grill and wanted to take my already worn, now soiled, nightwear. Give me the naughty nightwear! Luckily, Binface is a bit of a submissive and will absolutely roll over at any confrontation. Alright, alright. My mistake. It obviously belongs to you. Now, uh, you just watch it, because I won't be so nice next time. I found this big nerd called Dr. Lesko, Till you startled me. who's the main man responsible for the whole giant fire-breathing ant thing. Good to make your acquaintance. He said that he had a method to resize the ants to be very, very small, which I guess is just normal ant size. I suggested that we destroy the mutagen that caused this, but Lesko wanted to install a 5G tower into the hive and send the ants into a frenzy, and then humanely make them small again by injecting their eggs with medicine. The ants will lose their empathic link with the queen, and frenzy destroying each other in the process. How do we destroy the mutagen? Destroy? Oh, no, no, no! You mustn't do that! It's my life's work! So, I stealthed my way into the hive, logged onto Lesko's terminal, and destroyed the mutagen, whilst also making sure not to send the inhibitor pulse or harm the ant queen. This meant that the ants and their queen had absolutely no change of their threat level to the wasteland. But the mutagen that would shrink the ants would be destroyed, leaving Greyditch to be ruled by a race of fire-breathing giant ants forever. Lesko, where are you going? Come back! So Lesko was not happy with what I'd done, and the only thing I had left to do was to find Brian a new home and a new daddy. What's this funny suction hose for? I guess now you'll be on your way, and I'll have to try living here by myself. Brian, don't worry, I'll find you a place to live. Really? You mean it? Oh boy, thank you so much! What have I said about backtalk, Crimson? Hmm? I've got a young boy for sale. You interested? Jesus Christ, never thought I'd say Kids that. Kids are a bit tough in the resale, but they make good future breeders. Oh my god, you had the option to not say that, and you still said it. Now all you gotta do is put this collar on him and run his ass over here. We'll do the rest. I hope you found me a place to live. I sure did, Brian, and you're gonna love it there, mate. What is this weird thing? It's a paradise welcome necklace. It'll help you find your way, you lucky little devil. I can't believe everything you've done for me. And with that, Brian went off to Paradise Falls to become a slave, Dr. Lesko had his life's work ruined by me, and Greyditch will never be ant-free again. Oh, and Free Dog was fuming. That kid from Vault 101. This, faithful listeners, is the story of a little boy. A little boy named Brian Wilkes. That's where the kid from Vault 101 comes in, and where our story, unfortunately, it's even worse. You see, Mr. Vault 101 may have stopped the ant problem, but he couldn't be bothered to help poor little Brian. No. But what did he do with the boy, Three Dog? Where's Brian Wilkes now? I'll tell you where Brian Wilkes is. He's at fucking Paradise Falls, that's where. A little defenseless boy begged you for help, and what did you do? You sold him as a fucking slave. Shame, shame, shame on you. Yeah, I think it's time to change the radio station. I just What's this? Hope you're still alive to hear this. Wait, is that fat zone? Things got worse after you <sighs> left. What does My she father's want? gone mad with power. If you can hear this, please stop looking for your dad and help stop mine. I changed the door password to my name. So I got to the doors of Vault 101, entered my name, and came face to face with my old buddy Officer Armstrong. It was his job to make sure that no one was entering the vault from the wasteland, Stop and right because I can't stand confrontation, I, got... I told him that I was leaving, and then when his back was turned, I just creeped back in. Well, I can't blame you. Best of luck to you out there, kid. Don't worry about us. I made my way into the overseer's office to call him a batty crease. Well, I see you've returned. Done with the dust and ruins of the wasteland, are you? Given up looking for daddy? 
Thought you could just slink back in like a teen missing curfew? Well, that's too bad. You have no future in this vault. You're tainted. Are you having fun with that? Yes, I am having fun with that, Pepper, you big, stupid, supine invertebrate jelly. Oh my god, you're back! You got my message and actually came back! Obviously, I don't know what's out there, but it can't hurt to take a look, right? Yeah, man, it's peachy out there. It's all like green grass and that, you know? That's why we need to be able to go outside. We can trade with them, get supplies and things we both need. Even just to meet new people. But none of that can happen while my father's got the place locked down. Please, something has to be done. You know that better than anyone. I think I've got an idea. I certainly hope so. We can't keep going on like this. I just heard about your so-called solution. I should have you killed where you stand. The best we can do is offer you a sacrifice to send you on your way. At least with you gone, our home can return to some semblance of peace, even if it came at a tragic cost. I didn't want to just be evicted from the Big Brother vault without getting some petty revenge. So I went down to maintenance, stole the terminal's password, and ran a full systems purge. This made Philip Schofield vexed. In peace, could you? You couldn't have a home, so you decided to destroy ours. I tried to blame his daughter and her crew, but unfortunately he still remembers that I blew her head off, so that didn't work. Even they aren't foolish enough to destroy their homes just to prove a point. It could only have been you. How many of them do you think will survive out there? Still, better a few of them stay alive out there than have them all die down here. The evacuation will begin immediately, but you won't be joining them outside. I'll see to that myself. I should probably start therapy again. Leaving my home for the last time, I headed to Rivet City to meet with this dusty old man with a face Why looking like some sort of scrunched up ball of paper, Abraham Washington. He wanted me to find and retrieve the Declaration Abraham of Independence Washington. from the National Archives. Curator of this little slice of American history, this collection is a complete chronicle of our nation's history. A unique glimpse into the past. Well, almost complete. One document still continues to elude me. I want you to get the Declaration for me. You'd secure your place in history. The man who rediscovered the Declaration of Independence. Imagine the fanfare. Once I was inside the archives, I met a woman named Sydney who was holding off a legion of orcs. I could shoot the dick off a fly at a hundred yards without iron sights. Do flies even have dicks? What the fuck? What the... Oh, you have got to appreciate the picture on this article. Now I'm absolutely horrified because I can't stop thinking about them. Don't try and follow me. Not that you could. Oh yeah? You want to bet? Come here. Come here. Wait, where did you... Where did you go? I'll give her that, she weren't lying. I finally found where the declaration was being held. And it was being held in the safe of a robot that believed he was the real founding father. Button Gwinnett. Gun to fight! I cannot allow you to steal our freedom! The declaration must remain here! Button didn't want to part of the declaration and suggested that we forge a copy of it to fool the British. Fuck you. To do this, I had to collect some ink from the Arlington Library and bring it back to Button so that he could forge the document. Might be just the delay we need to get the document out of here safely. Saints alive! You've done it! Quickly, let me have the ink and I will produce the copy of the Declaration of Independence. Here you are, a perfect copy. That should give old George something to think about. What are the next orders from the Congress? How about OF9? I am shocked to hear these words from you. I thought I was doing my best to hold these fortifications on behalf of our country. Since I have obviously failed that task in your eyes, the only task I held dear, I see no recourse but to do the honourable thing. Farewell, and Godspeed. Why is it that I feel worse for Button than any other human character that I've screwed over? I mean, bros are glorified toaster wearing a wig. 
Moving on, I took the real Declaration of Independence from Button Safe and handed both the real and the faked version over to Abraham so that he will never truly know which copy is the real one. He will lose his mind knowing that he possesses such a huge part of American history, but he will never truly know which one it is. He didn't really seem to mind though. Oh my lord, I never expect- I mean, I am utterly shocked! You have earned your place in the annals of American history, yes indeed. You will be remembered for this great day. I'm ashamed to report that the Dark Passenger got the best of me and I ended up adding to my limb bargain bin again. Making my way downtown. I stumbled upon the Lincoln Memorial where slavers had holed up and made a small camp as a sort of dirty protest against Abraham Lincoln and all of his work abolishing slavery. Leroy Walker was the leader of this group and he offered me a hundred caps to find a man called Howard Hamlin. The thing about Howard Hamlin, he's the leader of a group of escaped slaves, so it's not really a good look. Slaves. I'm only interested in the leader, Hannibal Hamlin. You find him and I'll pay you 100 caps. Don't go trying to kill them or capture them yourself. I'll take care of that. I arrived at the gates of the Temple of the Union where they asked if I was the bad guy. I said no, stranger? and they let me walk right in. Ah, a visitor. Welcome to the Temple of the Union. We are all escaped slaves. I need your solemn promise not to betray us to Paradise Falls or the slavers. I told Leroy where he could find Hannibal, Bravo. so he rounded up the troops and made I his way I to the unfortunates. I'll gather up the boys and we'll go collect him. You can meet us there if you want. I then went into the temple and, using the Mesmatron, just where? turned everyone against each other. Get back, you beast! <laughs> Who are you again? Just stick this collar on. Okay, hey, this thing feels weird. Can I, can I take it off now? We are just about to wipe out this temple of the Union. You can join us or not. Join it makes you? No difference to me. I've already done it. Over here. Where? 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 Yeah, I killed them all after telling you not to. Oh, you killed them all, yeah? You killed one two-headed cow, you little snake. After bumping into Willow a little That's earlier in my playthrough, I thought I should check out this so-called underworld, as it's probably where I'm headed after this playthrough anyway, where most Sislak made me feel oh, very welcome. Look at that. We got us a smooth-skinned visitor. Ooh, we We ain't seen one of your type in a long time. Sorry, have you heard of a guy named Gob? Gob? Yes, of course. He's my son. Do you know him? Have you seen him? Is he alright? Yeah, he was in Megaton. Well, he was until I nuked him. You... You what? You son of a bitch! Help! What? Over here. Oh shit, she's packing! Ooh. Help me! Oh jeez! <laughs> this is not going well. Oh my god! It's a whole damn hunting party! Well, hello. Have you calmed down it's a bit? always good to see a customer. What do you need? Oh. Once everyone had forgotten the last incident, Snowflake offered me a haircut. To be honest, I was a bit sceptical that it would go full Sweeney Todd on me, but with the amount of protective chins that I've got, I think I'll be alright. Yeah, man. That's what I do. I cut hair. I know, I know you look around here and there ain't a lot of work to show off, right? These corpses only got half a head of the stuff, so I never get a chance to work on a full head. Luckily Snowflake didn't try to kill me, but he did fuck me up in other ways. Junk is my business. Oh no, not you. Hey you. Yeah, you. I wanna to talk to you. Mr. Crowley wanted to hire me as a hitman to kill some ghoul hating bigots. Ghoul bigots. Real scum. I've only got four guys left on the list. Started out with 11. All of them hate ghouls and treat us like we're zombies. They all deserve to die. Here's a list of the guys in their last known locations. Word will get around if ten pennies killed, but I'll need proof for the others. Bring me back something personal from each of them as proof. Like a key or a ring or something. All right, mate. No. Go talk to Azrakal. Well, now. Looky here. We got us a smooth skin that I ain't ever seen before. I'm Azrakal, and this 
This is the ninth circle. I spoke to Azrakal, who Probably told me that some of the people on Crowley's year. list aren't he's even ghoul haters. Like I mean, Dukov is a piece of shit, but he's a no, piece of shit in other ways. He ain't racist. Payback against ghoul haters. <sighs> Except I've met Dukov. He never insulted a ghoul in his life. We also talked about Sharon's contract of employment. Azrakal wanted me to kill Greta, and then I could take Sharon's contract. Well, you might not like the deal that I have to offer. Greta, the waitress over at Carol's. I want you to kill her. Come back to me when she's dead, and Sharon's contract is all yours. A word of advice. Be subtle. With Greta dead, I return to Azrakal and claim Sharon's contract to end my crippling loneliness. Third time's the charm, right? Well, it seems that this arrangement worked out well for both of us. Sharon's contract is yours. You are his new employer. I belong to no one. If you are my new employer, then I will serve you. But first, I must take care of something. Wait here. Azrakal. I am told that I am no longer in your service. That's right, Sharon. Have you come to say goodbye? Yes. What the fuck? Hey, Sharon. Huh? No. But... I said no. Some people... What? All right, let's go. Who the hell are you? Dukov was up first, and already I wanted to knock his stupid egghead off. However, I thought the wasteland would be better off with him around because misogyny. So I need to. <laughs> I wear them out every night. Why should they bother getting dressed when I'm just going to take it off? <laughs> so I paid him 200 caps to give me proof of his demise, and he gave me a key. You don't even know what's going on, do you, clown shoes? <laughs> You just bought yourself a motherfucking key. Whoa. What's the rush, dude? Whoa. Next up was That's Ted Strayer, who was the guy I was looking for's My son, so he had absolutely nothing to do with Crowley. Mr. Crowley. I never met him, though. I think Dad said he died when they were checking out some old fort. Whilst looting his corpse, I found another key. Huh. I wonder if there's some sort of larger conspiracy at play here. Victim number three was Big Dave at the Republic of Dave. Oh Jesus, this looks like a B-Tech version of the boy in striped pyjamas. Stop right there, mister. What you think you're doing in the Republic of Dave? Here, I'll take you to Dave. Just be sure to call him Mr. President Daddy. He likes that. I am Dave, President of the Republic of Dave. You will address me as Mr. President or I will have you executed. President Daddy now, Dave definitely gives off a lot of small dick energy and he comes across as someone with a lot of insecurities. So I took it upon myself to break him down as much as possible. Oh, and he's also a moron who believed that I was an ambassador you from are. the Wasteland. Excellent. It's good to see that the Wasteland has finally recognized the Sovereign Republic of Dave. If the people of the Wasteland are generous and respectful, I might deign to annex them. President Big Daddy Dave informed me that there was going to be another election for a new president. I'm so surprised. Can't you see this is a republic? An election is what separates a president like myself from a monarch like my father. Your father was a monarch? You mean like a butterfly? <laughs> How much radiation have you been exposed to? Not the butterfly, you moron. I said that I'd help Dave conduct the election that he so confidently felt was his to win. All right, sure, why not? The people have a tendency to wait until the last minute to vote, but I'd like just to get it over with. I'll spare a few caps if you just tell each of the adults to get over to the voting booth sometime today so I cinch the victory. Not that I have anything to worry about. The people know who their leader is in this republic. Mr. President Big Daddy Dave the First, uh, do you know Mr. Crowley? There's a name I haven't heard in a long time. Before the people elected me president, I worked with a mercenary named Mr. Crowley. Yeah, well, Crowley's still alive and I'm supposed to bring back proof of your death. Alive? I always wondered. Would you consider taking him... Once again, the proof of death for Crowley was a key. key. Big Daddy Dave informed and me that the keys are used to get through to Fort me? Constantine, and I'm starting to think that I might have been played. You need all the keys to get through Fort Constantine. Well, I since I was in the area, I thought I'd continue to well, help the election along, for the good of the Republic of Dave, and the undoing of Dave himself. Only Dave? 
He's the only person who ever runs. My first plan of action was to persuade Dave's first wife, Rosie, to also run for president. However, she actually had experience running a group bigger than this one, so I thought that she might be too good at leading the Davians. So I had to come up with another candidate. You're right. Dave's just been pushing me around. It's time for a change. Come on, make it fast. I got chores. Luckily for me, Bob was easily persuaded into a position of power where he could just become the tyrant Man, of his dreams. I so I wound him up a little bit and he was off, Everybody heading straight to towards to office. Just exile them to the wasteland. And the first thing I'd do is make myself the permanent leader so they couldn't vote me out in some other election. Yeah, I'll show them. When I'm in charge, everyone will have to say I'm as good as Dave. Better even. Fingers crossed. All done. Dave's the best. Ah, Dave, lead our republic to glory. I'm gonna win this. An opponent? Seriously? But... But... Wait. No, this is a free republic. Let the people make their choice. I am confident that they will recognize me as their true and proper leader. Well, it looks like all the votes are in, Daddy Dave. Good. The votes are in. If you'll excuse me, I'll be getting started on tallying the numbers. As Dave opened the ballot box to check the results, Let's see what I slipped my level 99 thieving hands into the box and removed all the votes for Dave and Rosie, leaving only Bob's vote in there, which was a vote for himself. Wait a minute. Has somebody tampered with the ballot box? Hmm. After counting the votes, the president is... What? Oi, where are you going? I guess you're wondering where I'm going. So, uh, Dave kind of took his loss pretty hard and walked out of the Republic of Dave with no warning, leaving his children and wives to fend for himself. Well now, President Bob, how do you like that? Boy, things are going to change around here. First step, get rid of all this Dave shit. The Kingdom of Bob. Or maybe Bobtopia. Bobtopia. I'll have to give it some thought. <laughs> I thought now was a better time than ever to steal from Dave's safe, as it's no longer his anymore. Stop, thief! Hey. Oh, Yo, what None the fuck, business. Sharon? Relax, man. With Jessica now dead, the only people left to repopulate Bobtopia is Bob, his mum Rosie, and his siblings. You see what you've done, Sharon? Now we go to Tenpenny Tower, where Alistair Tenpenny was a little angry that How I woke him up, especially when he found out that I woke up because want? of a ghoul. Oh yeah, Tenpenny is actually a bigot towards ghouls, the unlike ghoul? the other three people that I dealt with. Died 20 years ago. Tenpenny Neither knew that Crowley would want him dead, so I, I squeezed some known. caps out of Tenpenny. A hundred now is a down payment, and two hundred when I've killed Crowley. To shoot him in the head. Whatever he's paying you, I'll double it. One hundred now, two hundred when the job is done. Upon leaving, the tower's security decided to start firing on my homeboy, Sharon. Presumably because he was a ghoul. This is So we had to retreat back inside the tower, and I told Sharon to hide out in here from the feds while I looked for a way to break him out. I thought security was supposed to keep people out of places, not in. Are they all dead yet? Did you bring me any proof? I returned to Mr Crowley to collect my payment, using the keys as proof that I killed the people on the list. Excellent. That'll be a lesson for all the ghoul haters out there. Here's your payment for the key. I then asked about the location of Fort Constantine, and Mr. Crowley made it look like a real good idea to kill him and take the keys. With the payments I'll be getting from Tenpenny too, my mind was made, this fool of a ghoul's gonna die. What? I hired you to kill him. I want him dead. You double-crossed me. I won't get into a bidding war with him. I'll lose. Guess I gotta kill you now. I can smell the stink of ghoul on you. I mean, there's one over there. Tenpenny, I have come to collect my reward. So, Whoa, what are you doing? Dead, Point out eh? somewhere else, you psycho. Here's your pay. Now, don't spend it all in one place unless that place is Tenpenny Tower. Am I being threatened? After Tenpenny yeah. threatened me and trapped my ghoul Your bestie in his tower like some sort of fucked up here. Cinderella with third degree burns, I made it my mission to get revenge and free my bestie. Also, I cannot stand to suffer through another moment like this in the lobby to my apartment. Of course. Yes. Shopping is Hello. wonderful therapy, Good isn't it? Good to see you. Better than any old pill doc Banfield How are prescribes. You? So I made my way to Warrington Station, the only other safe haven of sorts for those that have turned into ghouls, other than the underworld. Tenpenny and his pack of elitist wannabes can't keep us out of that tower forever. We've got rights, and we'll take them if they aren't given to us. 
This group of crispies are led by a guy who's not just an arsehole, but he also looks like one. His name's Roy Phillips. I already got a plan. This group of ghoulies are waiting for the right moment to storm Tenpenny Tower and occupy it for all of ghoul kind, which, to be honest, works out quite well for my plans for freeing Sharon. The plan that Roy has to occupy in the tower is to open a subway access door to allow all the homeless crackheads to flood into Tenpenny Tower, thus lowering the real estate value in the area. I'll gather up a horde of ferals and wait for you by that escape door. You find a way to get it open, and then we'll sit back and enjoy the show. So, as you can probably guess, it was my job to get the access door open. All I needed to do was to pickpocket the door keys from Chief Gustavo, check that the crackheads were rearing to go, and then open the containment door. Great job, kid. Meet me around front. I have something for you to keep the ferals from gnawing on your ass. What if I kind of wanted that? You Sharon! Return. You're Shall free! Shall I join you once again? I've missed you. As you command. Great job, kid. Thanks for helping me save my buddy. Here, take this mask. It'll keep you safe from the ferals. That's it! That's it! Haha! <laughs> <laughs> hey there, bud. Thanks again for helping us get in here. After freeing Sharon from Tenpenny Tower, we went on an adventure to Fort Constantine, where I found some ICBM launch codes and, without hesitation, punched that shit into the terminal. Let's do some fireworks, baby! I finally hit the jackpot and got the best looking armour in Fallout 3, the fabled Mike Wazowski armour. Feeling a bit disappointed with the lack of fireworks, I made my way to a satellite array and found an activation code, which finally allowed me to launch an assortment of missiles for my own sick pleasure. Oh, was that it? After being utterly underwhelmed by the fireworks, I went to the chop shop, the underworld's hospital, to laugh at some amputees. Unfortunately, everyone was in one piece. However, there was a woman who looked as if Bill Cosby may have gotten to her. Afraid she's going to be out for a while. She's not well at all. Her name was Riley, and she was THE Riley from Riley's Rangers, and Riley no longer sounds like a name to me anymore. I told the doctor to wake her up, also I could verbally abuse her. What I can. Why are you just st- What? Where am I? If my guys were here, they'd kick your- Oh shit! My team! What the hell happened? Look, asshole, I don't know who you are, but no one talks to Riley that way. Yeah, you heard me. The Riley of Riley's Rangers. Riley's team was stuck on the top of the Statement Hotel last she knew, and because she's such a hard nut who is not to be messed with, she sent me to go and save them. So off to the Statesman Hotel I went, where I had to climb from the hospital over to the hotel by the means of a fallen crane and make my way to the roof. I found a really shit audiobook and then the worst thing happened. I set off a grenade trap and thought, Oh, I know. I'll run through the door before the grenades explode. So I've done that, minus the before they explode part. Sharon died and the game auto saved. My last manual save before that was over an hour ago. So, rest in peace, Companion Free. On top of the roof of the hotel, hey, you. young Scully informed me that the only way out is through an elevator, and they wanted my company on the way out. The name's Butcher. I'm the team medic. It's good to see a friendly face. Okay now, who the heck are you and when are reinforcements coming? The only way off the roof now is using the express elevator. I've heard so much about Riley's Rangers that I had to see how long it would take them to clear out the hotel lobby. So let's time them. Starting now. Seventeen seconds. So much for the famous rangers, eh? I went to the rangers' compound, hat in hand, to inform Riley about the passing of her elite troops. You look like you've been through hell. Well, as much as I want to hear all about it, can you tell me a full debrief on what happened out there with my man? First things first. Money! Wow. You sound like one of the guys from Talon Company. Ruthless bastard, aren't you? You can act badass all day. Doesn't faze me. You're chicken shit compared to some of the guys I've dealt with. To answer your question, yeah, I got your damn reward. Now how about that debrief? Yeah, they lost the 17 seconds. I... I don't know what to say. I should have never left them up there. Maybe with one more gun, they could have made it. I'm sorry, I, I think I need to be alone. Could you excuse me? 
Uh, reward? Are you out of your fucking mind? Reward? If you had some sort of deal going with Butcher, then that was between you and him. I'm guessing the deal was get them off that roof. They're all dead. So I don't see that as a success. Now get the hell out of my sight. So all of Riley's rangers had died, leaving the capital wasteland that bit more dangerous and chaotic. A bit like this little random event. Try new blabo! So blast stains out and blast the whole world out. We've all been blabbed. Make him shut up, please. Just make him shut up. Why don't you do it? No. No way. He'll set the bombs off if I go anywhere near him. No, he won't. He's all right. Oh. Um, well, you look like someone who's pretty smart. Any outcasts listening on this frequency report? We now head back to Rivet City, Welcome where the there's some shady politics going on between Bannon and Seagrave. Seagrave wants to replace Bannon on the council, but can't because... It's only the chairman who can remove people from a meeting. So you've met him, eh? Well, he wants to replace me on the council. Now I can't have that. No siree. He's a shady character, I just can't prove it. If someone Bannon's plan to stop Seagrave giving him the boot was to find some incriminating evidence on Seagraves, like 600 pictures of sweaty feet or a ball of used condoms under his pillow, to get him booted off the council. I brought the accusations to Seagrave, where he told me that Bannon's using council funds to prop up his own business. So naturally, I sympathised with the fraudster and worked on finding that incriminating evidence on Seagrave. Just himself, it's about time he was replaced. For some reason, Seagrave had a letter under his bed that had the words Seagrave's incriminating letter plastered all over the front. It contained details on Seagrave's really? past as a slaver. I, I mean, I'm shocked. So I brought it to Commander Danvers as Harkness has returned to the Commonwealth with his old masters. She said that Seagrave will never be trusted and will never be on the council. You can forget about that now. Once the market vendors get wind of his past, they'll never trust him. And then ran off to have a shit. Duty calls. You sneak into my room, steal my property, and then tell the world about it. I'd ban you from my shop if they'd let me. Instead, I'll just have to settle for ripping you off. I heard that Danvers found a letter from slavers in Seagrave's room. That will teach that bastard to mess with me. I think you've earned a permanent discount here. Come back soon. What's your problem? I then started manipulating children to pickpocket for me. Of course I'm not afraid. I'll take it and he'll never know. I'll have it by tomorrow. Wanna buy a girl a drink? Nope. I later found a group of Brotherhood outcasts that were trying to open the door to a military armory. Who the hell are you? And what do you think you're doing? Walking down the middle of this street like I'm the main character, I was quickly put into my place by two people who are even more egotistical than me. Under the protection of the mechanist! You and your pathetic tin cans are no match for my army! The citizens of this town have nothing to fear! The mechanist is here to protect them. Go forth, my steadfast creation. Show the vermin humanity's true power. Humans may be weak sometimes, but our creations are strong and pure. Something you'll never be. Now, the world will belong to the antagonizer. After that little skirmish, the antagonist was bested, so she retreated back to her lair. Being trained in the way of the female. <coughs> God. I'm always feeling sick from fucking saying that word. Being trained in the way of the females, like a true nice guy, I followed her home. Unfortunately, she must have caught wind of me on the prowl, so she lost me through the tunnels of her base. So I just crashed at her place, waiting for her return. Oh, it looks like I ain't getting ants in my pants tonight. Please, we really do need someone to stop the mechanist and the antagonizer. We can pay. But is it enough money to justify ending your misery? Yeah, I thought not. My nephew Derek might know more about them. I swear it's all I can do to keep him from running into the fight whenever they come out. He might know more about where you can find them, but don't encourage the poor boy. Oh, I'm gonna encourage the poor boy. Do they have any weaknesses? The mechanist robots are a lot tougher. I don't think he has any weaknesses. Well, maybe one. 
Since he's a good guy, he's not as ruthless as the antagonizer. Like, he'd never hurt an innocent like me. Well, I ain't siding with that nerd. I don't know much about her, except she really, really doesn't like people. That's kind of cool. I mean, sometimes people are jerks. Yeah, I'm sold on my mummy ant queen. So at last, you've penetrated the court of the antagonizer. Ah, uh, trust me, you ain't seen anything yet. I told the antagonizer that I'm also anti-mechanist, and she took me in with open arms. I mean, I did capture Greyditch for her kind. Who realizes that ants are destined to walk this land, while humans and their toys are destined only to rot beneath it? Perhaps even a human who wants to join the winning side, yes? One that would humbly beg admittance to the Ant Queen's court? Following my female training, I utilise the treat him keen and keep him mean... Wait, no, hang on. The treat him keen and keep him... The treat... Fuck. So I utilised the treat him mean and keep him keen ability I unlocked after becoming a level 5 misogynist and told her how much I didn't care about her dumb movement. I sent an intruder into my royal lair! It wasn't long until the Tin Man himself found Ant Woman's lair, but he wasn't ready for what we had in store for him. His meddlesome metal army is already inside! Destroy them! I stripped the mechanical man naked and persuaded Ant Woman to allow me to keep his clothes. Only so that I could give him to Derek and encourage him to become the next mechanist, hopefully killing him further down the line. Do you like being bad, or is it just you can't help it? I headed west and stumbled on a tiny town. I'm not even going to call it a town. It's two sheds and a cow. That sounds like a comedy. Sierra Petrova does the name. Good to see a new face in Girder Shade. I spoke to Sierra, who was a crackhead for Nuka Coke, and she said that she would teach me how to make Nuka Coke grenades if I find her 30 bottles of Nuka Coke Quantum. I mean, I would prefer you teach me how to make a nail bomb, because the last time I tried searching for a tutorial, my computer was seized by the police. But this sugar bomb of a grenade will have to do. Imagine the look on the target's face when they are burning alive in an effervescent explosion of cola and fruit flavors. Oh, goody! I can taste the quantum already. Hey, pal, what were you doing in Sierra's place? Oh my Girder god. Is my Andrew Tate, you is that you? Here and tell me you're taking Sierra. I'm going to be the first one to tap into her goods, not you. Oh Look, god, he's so off. damn alpha. You can either stand there, be a pain in the ass, or you can listen to what I have to say. Andrew Tate asked me to give him some Nuka Coda Quantum instead, so that he can give him to Sierra and score some alpha points, so that hopefully he'll be able to redeem the pussy package and not be alone with his thoughts tonight. Instead of bringing it to her, you bring it to me. She'll be so impressed that I got all the Nuka Cola for her, she'll melt in my arms like butter. I pay you the same she was going to pay, and everyone's happy. Being the Sigma male that I so clearly am, I haggled with Andy to pay me double for the bottles you of Quantum, and he agreed. I didn't figure you were that clever. All right, all right, double it is. Just bring me those bottles. If I have to listen to Sierra ramble on any longer, I think I'll blow my brains out. Bringing me some Quantum, I hope. Won't be long before I'm ready to spring my surprise on Sierra. She's gonna give it up for me for certain for this. Heck, she better. I returned with 29 Quantums for Andrew so that he can't fulfill the 30 bottle quota. Then I filled his shack full of thousands of Quantums, took his caps and killed him with a new Coda grenade. Watch out! When Sierra sees what happens, she will presume that Andrew was hoarding the Quantum for himself, and when one overpressurized bottle was knocked, the whole thing went up in fire, blood and syrup. So I returned to Sierra a hero. I gave her 30 bottles of quantum and got paid again. I also let her know about Andy. I told her that he wants to get into her pants, and she said, That's so silly. Why would a man want to wear a pair of these filthy woman's pants? You've done it! My machine is finally full! If you find any more bottles, be sure and bring them by. I'll be glad to keep paying for them. Sierra seemed happy to have her collection of quantums completed, so I left Gerdeshay the happy man. Well, not before I stole all her Nuka Colas. With my newly acquired money, I dropped a fat stack on doing up my apartment, and I was not disappointed. Damn, they got the heart bed. The hanging sex lights. Uh, uh, hold it right there, pal. You're giving me everything you own. Uh, now. I was then nearly mugged by some guy who seemed to be one of the two characters ever written by Justin yeah, Roiland. Anything by it? Just trying to get by out here in the wastes, you know? It, it won't happen again, uh, sir. Uh, who are you again? I wonder if I can make him a slave. Damn it, just give us your clothes. 
Huh? And you're back in the room. Uh, I don't know. Where am I? Hey! Yo, what the? Where? We got a gangster! Get off me! <laughs> Whilst doing a bit of sightseeing, I came across the miracle on God's brown earth. A bit of greenery! Going past the bush and deeper into the canyon, I found a group of Extinction Rebellion protesters blocking the road. I have something of the utmost urgency to speak to you about. Tree Father Butch took me into his tree palace to tell me about a guy who foretold his people of my arrival, and to bring me to him, after I drank the communal Kool-Aid and had a quick nap. The sap from the basin. Glad to see you're finally awake. I can't believe they made you do that stupid ceremony. <laughs> I had you brought in here to ask a very simple favor. Would you please kill me? So it turns out that the guy's a tree, or more, a guy with a tree growing around him and a big grey cloud overhead oh, called no, Depression. No, no. He asked me to kill him, but apparently Mr. Gottfried was opposed to cremation whilst he was still alive. So I had to find the kiddies' organs that had been spread around the area by Bob's roots. Oh, Bob's the tree, by the way. Father Birch wanted me to slow the growth of Harold so that Oasis doesn't draw too much attention to itself. Harold's the name of the man in the tree, by the way. Of this secluded vale. We can't allow Oasis to call attention to itself like that. It would be the end of him. Leaf Mother L'Oreal Paris, on the other hand, wanted me to apply some moisturiser to Harold's heart. It should help promote the growth of Bob and his plant friends. The thing is, with the existence of old tree beard over there in the back garden, there's a potential that the wasteland can become a post-nuclear garden, where plant life and crops can once again grow, giving hope for America and, ultimately, the entire world. So I couldn't allow that to happen. <laughs> And boy, do the tree-hugging hippies not like that. Next up, we go to Agatha's shed, or as I like to call it, the love shack. My, my, my. You certainly do look a little bit worn out from your travels. Oh, just look at my terrible manners. I'm Agatha. It's so nice to meet you. No need to get testy with me, young man. I started disrespecting Agatha in her own home, and she wouldn't speak to me for a little bit. That's just about all I'm going to take from the likes of you. When you walked in, I thought you were different than the normal riffraff that crawls out of the sand. I see now that I was wrong. Come back and talk to me when you decide to be more civil. After she calmed down a little bit, I called her a prostitute. That's disgusting. I'm old enough to be your grandmother. I won't have that kind of talk in this house. My training depends on my violin. Without it, I have nothing to play. No way to make music. If you can bring me a violin, a better one, I'd feel much more secure. She then told me she wanted a fiddle. Oh my, I didn't know I still had the looks. So I made my way to Vault 92 looking Just for a violin. After giving Agatha the violin, she needed some music paper to write down her banging tunes. So I went back to the top of the Statesman Hotel, picked up some music paper, and returned to Agatha, where she gave me a new gun. My word! You actually found some real music paper. This is all too much. You deserve more than just a pat on the back. Here, take this pistol. It's all I have left. Use it to protect yourself or shoot yourself in the foot for all I care. <laughs> So after that, I took the violin from a steaming corpse and sold it to some merchants. As I was running away from my sins, I found an Uber boat that was offering cheap holiday trips to local coastal towns. If you're going to Point Lookout and you find a girl named Nadine, please give her this note. Welcome, my friend. I am Tobar the Ferryman. The boat pilot was this Kenny-looking dude, Duchess and he was happy to take me where I wanted to go. Welcome to Skegness.
Once we docked, I was assaulted by the product of a brother and a sister loving each other very much. Bobtopia's future doesn't look too bright. I found an old mansion where a bunch of savages were attacking this crispy looking bloke, so I had to help the poor sod and his dogs out. Desmond told me that he was being bullied on the playground by the savages, and I had to find out why. Fucking courtesy of telling me why. So I need you to find a way into their commune and figure out what's going through their ad little heads. Hark! Who goes there? Who lingers at the threshold of transcendence? So I went to the Nutjobs Cathedral, where they wouldn't allow me entry until I completed the little frat boy initiation. Nothing big, but it really does make a difference. I had to collect some seeds from my mother plant. So I went to the bog where this Cthulhu looking sludge plant gave me a severe case of pink eye and I must have gotten an infection because I started tripping. Oh no, the trees know what I've done to Agatha. What the fuck? Oh god, they know about the new Kokoda incident as well. <laughs> oh, I need to see my therapist about this. A martyr? Lions? I'm a bit peckish, you know. Come here, Moira. I'm getting revenge for what you put me through. Even though I guess the nuke did make a sequel. You again? No, no, don't, don't try and get up yet. So I woke up with a banging headache and kind of looked like Charles Bronson. So whatever happened, I knew it must have been a mad one. I was permitted to enter the Headcase HQ, where Truly I spoke to some street performer and then found out that last night I went and got one of my two brain cells taken out. After you pass out, they get a guy to bring you back cut open your skull, and free your mind. As in, he rips out a bit of your brain. Usually people get embarrassing tattoos on a night out, not have their skulls caved in, but I guess that's Skegness for you. Anyway, you look like a lively one, so welcome to the tribe. I found out that there was a man putting the strings behind all this, and he has a secret hideout in a cave in a boat, or in a boat in a cave, or something like that. That's a bit ominous. At last, yes, Desmond will die, and our long struggle will finally end the only way as it happens, the guy who ran things behind the scenes wasn't a full man. He was just a brain. So I'm gonna call him Brian. <laughs> we shall be the instrument of your mighty will. Brian liked that I blew what's his name's head open. I think it might be his kink. You certainly make quite an Brian told me that Desmond is getting on his nerves by jamming his neural control transmitter that he's planted into some people's brain. Hang on a minute. So I returned to Desmond to tell him about what I found, where we both plan to stop Brian being able to talk to his followers. A talk box? All you need to do is take it to the highest point on the shore and install it. Easy, right? The only problem was that I'm kind of afraid of heights, specifically ferris wheel induced heights. But Desmond didn't really care about my ferris phobia. And turn it on when it's ready. Then we'll see where our little professor is. Now go. It is I, oh. Professor Calvert. Don't bother looking around. I'm in your mind. So, begrudgingly, I made my way to the big wheel. Faithful little employee. How about instead of playing his game, you destroy that nasty little device? Deposit it in the nearby trash compactor and we will never have to worry about it again. I finally decided not to face my fears and bin the jammer. At least this way, I'll never be alone with my thoughts again. I'll have Brian's too. Excellent! Most excellent! I knew that you would make the right choice. Return to Calvert Mansion. I have something there that I'd like you to see. Hey Desmond! Fuck you! Oh, oh, oh I'm so powerful! It's beautiful, really. The final showdown between the two socialites was to take place in some random lighthouse basement. Yo, you bastard. Betray me, you fuck. You think you can betray me? You have one chance. Alright, so I can betray you. Fucking Only once, though. Fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, shame on you. No, hang on. Fucking all. And you will help, or you will be my enemy. At this point, I was pretty sure that I was siding with Brian, well, now, but I did string Desmond I along for just long enough so that I can see this final sense. showdown. There you are, you slippery bastard. At last, let's end this here and now. 
Hang on, let me loot. Oh, cool. At long last, Desmond is dead! And you, my friend, I have you to finally thank for it! Well, for you, I have a very special gift. Death! You betrayer! You little snake! Betrayal? No, no, no. Betrayal is for lesser men. Your use to me has simply expired. And now, I will dispose of you! One thing I didn't know is that Desmond had these, like, reverse Cyclops glasses that gave me laser vision. Robots, to me! Yeah. Goodbye, Brian. So I escaped that hellhole, only to be sniped by some random island tramp. Yeet! After feeling used and gaining absolutely nothing from that quest, I mean, apart from some stylish glasses, I made my way to the Baker Ranch, I mean Blackhall Manor, where some crippled old man had his limited edition copy of the Karma Sutra stolen. You see, I hate seeing people preying on the less abled, so I promised to help the sweet old man, and it's not just because he's paying me, alright? I do have a heart, somewhere. They think the book has a kind of occult power. Superstition and nonsense, of course. You need to head to the ritual site east of the boardwalk and expect a fight. As I was leaving the manor, some rando ran up to me and said that the Please, eh, is understand. evil. So I became even more determined to lay my hands on it. That book, the Krivbekne, is a thing of evil. Obadiah's no better than the heathens he's asked you to steal it from. He believes he can use it to control them, and God knows what else. I said I wanted me to destroy the book, but destroying religious text is never really a good look. Trust me. So I quickly started up Skyrim and made my way to this random dungeon to pick up these paperback words of power. I went to taunt Marcella about what I was intending to do with this book, but I was too late. She was slain by some black market book club smugglers. And if that doesn't sound like a Boris Johnson insult, I don't know what does. I made my way back to Blackhall Manor, where the poor cripple was trying to make moves on me. Give it to me. Now give it to me. Hey, what the fuck? You shouldn't be here. You shouldn't be Get standing. Out of my home. Don't play it what you misunderstand, troglodyte. Get out. Um, what the hell? <laughs> I mean, I usually hide my bodies in the river, but this is nice too. We are nothing alike. More so than you could ever comprehend. Go now. Never return. Wait, did he just tie himself up? When I returned to the riverboat, Nadine had found out who'd stole my other brain cell. And it was Tobar. And you'll never guess who it was. As a totally unrelated hint, I'm in charge of his boat now. Feel free to give Tobar my love. Preferably with the sharp end of a hot knife. Of course, you can always ride for free. Apparently I was calling for my daddy on Tobar's operating table. He clearly got the wrong idea of my unconscious Freudian slips, but hey, I'm willing to roleplay. Really, what would your father say? I thought he raised you better than that. You had an awful lot to say about him when you were unconscious. And from the sound of it, he'd be very, very disappointed in what you've become. Sounds like he didn't spank you enough as a kid. Maybe I can make up for his lost time. Oh, what's this? For some reason you feel a terrible sense of loss as you look at the familiar lump of grey matter. Well, that's a bit weird. Are you ready now? Oh yeah! Jeez, I forgot about you guys. It wasn't urgent, was it? Hurry it up! Every minute you take is one more that we can't afford to spend. Hold up. I hate to be doing this again, but if we're going to war, we're going to need a bigger army. So first of all, I cashed all my ears into Mr. Littlehorn, or Satan himself if some theories are to be believed, and yeah, that checks out. The more ears you deliver to me, the greater your coffers will grow. One with a heart as black as yours deserves to be rewarded for it. We shall include a bonus in your pay this time. Enjoy it! Might I recommend booze, or gambling, or perhaps a nice chem habit? I then went to a scrapyard and recruited the fighting dog for our assault on the Jefferson Memorial. Dog me. 
So I returned to the Citadel with my army in tow and made ready for war. Yes? I'm glad that we understand one another. Are you ready now? We can't afford to keep standing around like this. Yes, I'm ready. Okay, don't be nervous. You'll have the whole pride backing you up, not to mention this giant tin can. All right, Rothschild, fire it up. Pride, move out! Who's he shooting at? Jesus! Lions, no! Are you alright? Oh, oh, oh! Are you alright? Oh, you coward, come back! What? What was that scream? All of this just works. Colonel Sanders was waiting for me in the main hey, room, because, I mean, of course he was. So, I made him doubt his relationship with his boss. That's not true. That plan was abandoned months ago. He would never go behind my back. I am in charge here. I am the Enclave. I thought that the worst outcome of this situation would be to let the main villain of Fallout 3 walk away unharmed, able to return somehow. So, that's what I've done. Now. Very well. I shall leave you to your fate. It was now time for me to insert the modified FEV virus into the Wasteland's water system, for President Eden to ensure the death of all non-pure, irradiated humans. And man, that damn haircut's really getting to me. You're just going to let him leave like that? I can't believe you, of all people, would show mercy on him. <laughs> the real whoa, 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 put it down! You can take my fucking eye out! One of us is going to have to go in there and turn the damn thing on. And whoever does it isn't coming back out. Not exactly how I imagined going out, you know? So, what should we do? Draw straws? I vote you do it. So that's how it is? So much for chivalry. Fine, I'll do it. But I need the code. Um, dog meat? You alright, mate? Well, good luck. Good luck? That's it? Fine, thanks. Now, let's get this over with. No! The dog meat! No! Why didn't you follow me? What are you doing? I can't have your blood on my hands too! No! No! Dog meat! Look at you! No! What's she doing? No! And so it was that the lone wanderer ventured forth from Vault 101, intent on discovering the fate of a father who had once sacrificed the future of humanity for that of his only child. The Capital Wasteland proved a cruel, inhospitable place, and the lone wanderer ultimately surrendered to the vices that had claimed so many others. Selfishness, Greed, cruelty, these were the values that guided a lost soul through countless trials and triumphs. It was not until the end of this long road that the lone wanderer was faced with that greatest of virtues, sacrifice. But the child refused to follow the father's selfless example, instead allowing a true hero to venture into the irradiated control chamber of Project Purity and sacrifice her own life for the greater good of mankind. Sadly, when selected by the sinister president to be his instrument of annihilation, the wanderer agreed. Humanity would be preserved, but only in its purest form. The waters of life flowed at last, 
But the virus contained within soon eradicated all those deemed unworthy of salvation. The capital wasteland, despite its progress, became a graveyard. So ends the story of the Lone Wanderer, who stepped through the great door of Vault 101 and into the annals of legend. But the tale of humanity will never come to a close, for the struggle of survival is a war without end. And war... War never changes. After being judged by literal hell boy, I woke up in the Citadel after being in a coma for two weeks. Easy now, take it slow. Yeah, about Sarah. <laughs> it's all right, I understand. I have no doubt she refused to allow you to put yourself in harm's way. We all owe her a great debt, and I, I could not be prouder. Well, I'm glad to have made her make you proud. I wonder if you might be willing to aid us a bit further. While we've had a decisive victory, the Enclave threat hasn't been removed yet. Good to see you. Go now. I have nothing more to say to you. Oh, okay. Apparently Dogmeat survived, so I told him to stay here with Star Paladin Cross as I couldn't bear risking his life again. Alright, I'm just going to take a moment here to ask you to subscribe if you're enjoying this video because I have more playthroughs like this planned and I would love for you to be along for the ride. Also, if you don't, I'm going to cave Dogmeat's head in, so you've been warned. You want to be my friend? I'm sorry, until you prove yourself worthy of the legacy of your father, I cannot join you. Stay strong, my friend. I've been tasked to deliver the final blows to the Enclave of the Brotherhood of Steel, but what they didn't know is that I am entirely present Eden's bitch, and I'll do anything to get in the AI's a-hole. You were asked back to the Citadel, I thought you might be comatose forever. Kind of surprising that you managed to survive, but with all her training, Sarah didn't. Democracy is truth. Communism is death. Embrace democracy or you will be eradicated. Warning. Red Chinese orbital strike imminent. No! Big man! System failure. If two, six, eight, two, 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 zero, nine. I die so that to mock We need to find out what the hell just happened. I found some experimental enclave tech called the Tesla coil. Don't know what it does, but I've got it. You found a Tesla coil? And now it was time for me to go for the jugular. A one-man army assault on the enclave's headquarters. Oh! Excuse me. So I took a ride in this dude's hat, and if you don't know what I mean by that, this is how that works, and made my way to the airbase. At the airbase, I had a meeting with the Capitalist Colossus Council, where the nine leading ministers debated on whether to avenge their brother that the Enclave murdered. They finally came to an agreement, the army of the big mounts was to be called in. And boy did they come in full force. God, they're so loud! Democracy is non-negotiable. Damn, you guys cut fresh shapes. Oh man, don't hurt me. I just work here. I saw what you did before you got in the base. You're not gonna hurt me, are you? Yes, I'm gonna hurt you. Please! I never did anything to you! <laughs> I've Help. never seen such a straightforward conversation in this game. <laughs> Further into the base, I found this satellite uplink that allowed me to launch some rods from God. Basically, there's some big old bombs dropped from space that can target anywhere on Earth. Well, in this case, only the Enclave HQ and... Hello. So I fulfilled my duty to President Eden, launched bombs at the Citadel, and hitched a ride home without anyone knowing what just happened. Citadel Control, this is Ride 1. Citadel Control, come in. 
What the hell's wrong with the equipment on this flying junk pile? Let me try this. Citadel Control, come in. This is Pride One. Citadel Control, where the heck are you? There must be a malfunction or some trouble over there. We're going to head right over and see what's going on. Hang on. Oh no, what a mess. I don't think they've noticed what's happened. Dog me! You survived! Oh, okay, they've noticed. You know what, boy? I think you might be unkillable. That is a lot of smoke. Oh my... Holy shit! Oh, that's a lot of damage! What's this? Oh, the armory! Bethesda, you should not be giving me these. News seems to have gotten out about what I've done, and the brother is still now hating for it. Which, fair enough. I can't really blame him. I found an entry on a Brotherhood terminal that described a ghoul from the underworld called Griffin, who wanted to buy a batch of purified water to sell to the other ghouls. The same purified water that I contaminated with FEV to kill any non-pure human, i.e. ghouls. So I just had to meet this scumbag and help him become my personal dealer of death. What are you waiting for? Sign up today. That is amazing. After listening to his little snake oil act, I had to try some for myself. Well, hello there, smooth skin. Step right up. Have you come to savor the great taste of the amazing Aquacura? I checked the Aquacura stats of my Pip Boy, as I knew that Griffin was refused from purchasing Aquacura from the entry that I mentioned earlier. I hope there's nothing wrong. The stats told me that this special radiation reversing drink was just plain irradiated water, and you could find it anywhere in the wasteland. He should be selling the death juice, so I challenged Griffin on this. Ah, uh, what? That doohickey on your wrist says the water's irradiated? That's a pretty fancy device if it can know something like that. But clearly it's, uh, misinformed. You should get that fixed because it's definitely giving you false information. Relax, I don't care what you're doing. It's true, I got a thing going. I take the Aqua Pura, store it to sell to humans later, then I put the irregular irradiated crap in the bottles and sell it to these fools. I told him that I wouldn't expose his lies, as long as he sells the ghoul killing juice in the underworld instead of the standard irradiated safe to drink water. Well, safe to drink for ghouls. That's seriously gonna cut into my profits. But perhaps you're right. After all, it's not like he was gonna be a piece of cake selling the aqua pure to raiders and slavers. They're a nasty bunch. Fine, I'll sell them the real deal. But I'll keep the amazing aqua cura powder. It gives this sorry lot a little hope for the future. I hope no one notices the switcheroo. And who knows? Maybe it really will be a miraculous cure. Come back in a few days, we'll see if anyone notices. And come back in a few days I did. What's wrong with everybody, Doc? I don't know yet. Some kind of virus that attacks the body on a cellular level. I've never seen anything like it. It's strange, because ghouls are immune to almost any known disease. Another successful enterprise, I think. If you're here looking for water, I'm afraid I can't help you. Outside Route C, Officer Lepelletaire needed a mercenary to help her caravans deliver the Aquapura shipments, as they were being raided by bandits. And being such an advocate for the amazing effects of Aquapura, I offered my help. For a fee, of course. I'm not a charity. Good. My veterans are already out in the field. Or worse, never came back. I could use someone who knows what he's doing. I finally came up with an idea that would stop that stupid mutt from following me around everywhere without going for the boring point and bang method. Really Firstly, I needed to use Lepelletaire's gun instead of my own. Well, I didn't need to, I just wanted to. Alright. Consider it an advance on your payment. You'd better not disappoint. Oops, I dropped my gun. Get on, boy, fetch! Alright, go, 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 go! And just like that, 
Dogmeat never returned from Atlantis. I found the caravan I was supposed to protect a bit too late. Everyone was dead and the water was nowhere to be found. However, I did find a dead bandit with a location to the gang's new meeting place. Who the hell are you? Once I'd found the gang, I really wanted to join them because the leader had an eye patch and that's kind of cool. Huh. You're one of the newbies then. What is it? Take a seat and relax already. You're making me nervous. We hit water caravans and stashed the Aqua Pura. And after Rivet City's had enough, we offer our Wasteland Protection Services. Then we control the water. And we charge whoever, whatever, we want for. How do you like that? As a matter of fact, I really like that idea as this would allow me to control the distribution of Aqua Pura and also profit from it. The only issue is, to have control, I would need to be the leader of this little gang. So I challenged Jack in a fight to the death for the leadership of the gang. Use that and only that. I get hit with something other than that, or by anyone else, and my boys join in. Good luck. You're gonna need it. Dead! Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Killed the boss, fair and square. Good job, kid. Normally that'd make you the new boss, but we're all tired of bosses. What? But we like Split Jack's plan. So, if you can get that bitch at Rivet City to buy into our protection services, we'll split the take with you. Fine. So, we don't need you to be our leader. But we will cut you in on the protection racket, if you can get Le Pelletier to sign on. Well, did you take care of whoever's behind the attack? So I got Le Pelletier to sign on to the protection racket, but she really wasn't happy about it. Y what? Damn it. I just don't have that kind of money at my disposal. Here's the deal. I'll give you 500 caps from my own personal savings, mind you, and you call off the attacks. But that's it. That's all I have. Not good enough. 500 caps now and more when I ask for it. I gave you the money. That's it. You've pushed me too far. Walk away. Right now. If you come around here again, I'll kill you. It's humongous. Assault! Ass open fire! Well, that escalated a bit. Oh my God. As I was skipping about the wasteland, I found a radio frequency that led me to a giant frisbee that made weird noises. I then started levitating, thinking, man, I've really got to stop taking jet. Uh, Moira? Moira? Is that you? Who are you, Rob? Oh, je suis fabuleux. Je ne me sors pas bien. Je ne me sors pas bien. No, 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 no! Oh. About time you woke up. Usually when I wake up, my cellmate's standing over my bunk. I panic, but after having a high-tech butt plug in there, I don't fear anyone. At least they let me keep my clothes. Looks like they stripped you of everything. Shit! You hear that? It's coming again. Back against the wall now. What? They got claw machines. They want us alive for something. Summer's plan was to throw a fake fight to trick the little French man into coming to our cell. Once they came in, we'd jump him and escape. Alright, I'll hold back on you. Make sure you don't get too roughed up, okay? So I threw the first punch, and then the next, and then the next, and then like a dog seeing a toddler for the first time, I started seeing red. Ow! We fighting now, aren't we? Even when the little Frenchman came in to break it up, I just couldn't stop. I was on a roll and I was gonna win. The US doesn't bargain with aliens! So I freed this pocket-sized headache who told me I need to grab a spacesuit from the spaceman that the French had cryogenically frozen. The only issue was that, to form Mr. Lightyear, I also had to release all the other inhabitants. Where are they? Where are the little buggers? Huh? What are you saying? Wait, are you an alien? Who the hell are you? Oh my god. Wait a minute. Aliens! I was taken by aliens! You! 
You must be the aliens trying to get into my mind. Well, that's not gonna work. I swear, if you don't calm down, I'm gonna stuff you back in the freezer. No, don't do it. No, don't do it. Oh, no. That poor astronaut. Those freezers are so dangerous. Sometimes people don't wake up. I guess you better take his suit. So I took Mr. Lightyear's suit. However, I forgot to put it on once I was in the airlock. I suited up and then made my way to the bridge. Oh my god! At last, I'd made it to the death ray room, and I just had to test out the damn thing. So I aimed it at Washington DC, and I fired. This made my laser vision glasses look like tiny little pea shooters. The capital state will never look the same again. I've brought ruin onto the land. I think I will name it the Capital Wasteland. Wow, this looks just like the bridge on Captain Cosmos. As I was stroking myself to all the power I'd just gained, the police municipal pulled up and charged me with the crimes against humanity. So I raised the death ray and vaporized the Jamon. What's this? Just like any good Catholic priest, I confessed to all my sins and I was forgiven in the eyes of the good Lord. Things were starting to look up for me. I had a wicked spaceship with a giant death ray, the best crew a captain could ask for, and to top it all off, I was on speaking terms again with my good old buddy Jesus. Now it's time for me to sit back, have a drink of some ice cold purified water, and watch the world burn. Huh? Nah, it's probably just the best before. Wait, what? <laughs> what? No! I'm not a pure human! What? God may have forgiven our hero of sorts, but karma doesn't forget. The FEV virus in the water that was placed to kill all non-pure humans, in an ironic turn of events, killed the man who put it there, resulting in the most convoluted suicide in all history. The crew of the captain gave him a true spacefaring funeral, and set his body adrift into the stars. Thank you all so much for making it this far in. This video has taken me months upon months to put together and I mean if you liked it I would really appreciate a like and subscribe. Going forwards I'm now going to be playing and streaming New Vegas for the very first time ever. I know it's kind of crazy but I've never played Fallout New Vegas. I've heard amazing things about it and I know I'll love it but I just haven't got around to it. Until now, right here on my YouTube channel. So if you want to relive playing this classic for the first time through me then feel free to join me when I go live. To be honest, I'm pretty excited for when Starfield comes out, so you can bet I'm going to be making a hell of a lot of videos on that when it's here. So, until then, thank you all for watching, I'll see you soon, and have a good one.